Deep beneath the ocean's waves lies an incredible set of species. Collectively, they're known as squids. But to understand where they come from, we have to first understand the taxonomy. Starting in the phylum Mollusca, squids move down the evolutionary chain into the class Cephalopoda, meaning head foot, and from there, the order Tuatheta. These true squids, or free swimmers, have two suborders. Order Oegopsida, principally oceanic squids. These are far ranging and not well known. These include deep sea squids and those in the pelagic zone. In order Myopsida, these are coastal and mostly live over continental shelves because they are restricted to coastal areas, much is known about their life cycle, and they are commercially fished. There are over 400 known species of squids in the ocean. These fascinating creatures are found in oceans worldwide, with squid being one of the few animals that inhabit the freezing waters of the Antarctic. The North Atlantic is home to more species of squid than any other of the habitat locations, largely found around the Gulf of Mexico, Hawaii, and California. Squid in the North Pacific range all the way from the Bering Strait down to the Sea of Japan. Squid live an average to one to two years before they're consumed by predators and grow to an average of 20 centimeters in length when they are fully grown, although some species will commonly grow to 60 centimeters long. The earliest form of squid discovered is at least 60 million years old. Evolved during the Cambrian era, during which the external shell became the buoyant soft structure that is their body today, Squids evolved from the shelled mollusks, or cephalopods known as nautiluses. Like all cephalopods, these exclusively marine animals are characterized by a bilateral body symmetry, a prominent head, and a set of arms or tentacles. Like most cephalopods, squids have advanced vision, with large eyes on the side of their heads. They also have eight appendages, with two longer tentacles that are used for feeding and mating. Squid use these tentacles and the paired fins on their mantle to propel themselves through the water. Squid also contain ink sacs, used to confuse predators, and to allow themselves time to escape. Along the body of most cephalopods and all squids are chromatophores, cells that are used to flash colors and reflect light. These rapidly changing colors are not just for show, they also help the squid avoid predation, confuse prey, and help court a potential mate. Some squid exhibit bioluminescence, these firefly squid off the coast of Tokyo have washed up on shore, creating an almost eerie-like glow upon the sand. This deep sea squid uses its chromatophores to change its color to red. Red is not a color that gets this far deep in the ocean, and therefore renders this squid invisible. Squids eat a wide range of marine animals ranging from fish to crustaceans to mollusks and even other squid. These carnivorous hunters use two long tentacles to lash out and grab their prey, at which point they pull their prey to their mouths or beaks under the bottom of their mantle and rip off chunks of flesh to ingest. What looks to be a swarm under a boat is actually the beginning of a squid spawning aggregate. Thousands of males and females come together in these spawning pools in order to lay eggs. At first, they seem extremely chaotic, with squids swimming around during the beginning of the day, not running into each other. Then, as the day progresses, courtship happens. Males use their chromatophores in order to change their colors to red. Females then use their chromatophores to respond by turning a pale white then pairings occur. As pairings occur, the male will attach itself to the mantle or head of the female. It will then extend its sperm-carrying arm, known as the hectocotylus, in which to impregnate or fertilize the female eggs. The female will then later eject those eggs out into the ocean. These eggs will one day grow into squid themselves, and then end up back at another spawning aggregate much like this one. Squid reproduction isn't always as chaotic. As seen here, of two squid filmed off the Polynesian coast, mating can occur between just two. This pre-spawn waltz is especially true 
for the larger squid and those found at extreme depths in the ocean. A squid of note is the particularly voracious predator, the Humboldt squid. It's found at depths primarily from 200 to 700 meters. The Humboldt squid is known to grow up to seven feet long and weigh up to 100 pounds. The Humboldt squid gets its name from the major location on the Humboldt Current in the East Pacific Ocean region. It's one of the most aggressive squid in all the world. Known to eject themselves out of water and attempt to avoid predators, they are the only Decidicus to be members of the flying squid family, Amistrophidae. They flash red as they attack their prey, earning themselves the nickname by sailors as the Red Devils. They live in large shoals with up to 12,000 members. Climate change has caused the Humboldt squid to migrate north along the American Pacific coast into Oregon and Washington. Although not a threat to humans, the Humboldt squid has been known to put a few divers into the hospital. This is mainly caused by their aggressive feeding habits or when they feel threatened. A study conducted from 2007 to 2011 concluded that Humboldt squid actually hunt larger prey in groups. The more scientists learn about these hunters of the deep, the more fascinating they become. Some squid are considered monsters. Sea monsters exist in ancient cultures around the world. In 12th century Norway, it's considered the Kraken, a monster that attacks boats from the deep and brings men to their doom. Popular culture depicts giant squids as monsters to be vanquished and conquered, as shown here in Disney's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. But what do we actually know about the giant squid? Bodies have shown up over the last 40 years, either washed ashore or brought up by commercial fishing lines. During that time, no live specimens were ever filmed or seen. Currently, we know that there are eight identified species that fall into the group of giant squids. They're very large in size, with an average length in females up to 43 feet. Their eyeballs are as big as basketballs, and their brain surrounds the inside of their mouth. In fact, if they eat too much, they give themselves brain damage. It wasn't until 2012, in a joint venture with the Discovery Channel, that the giant squid was finally discovered, live, in its own habitat. Squids have many predators, from sharks to other fish, to penguins, to marine mammals, even to other squids. If it lives in the ocean and enjoys eating, it usually enjoys squid. And natural predators are not the only ones. Over two million squid are captured annually for commercial fishing and harvest. There's some concerns about the amount of squid that are harvested annually. With an average lifespan of one or two years, there is some concern that the squid population is declining. The main method for catching squid is called jigging. This is a process of luring squid with bright objects being placed into the water. The squid latch onto the bright objects and are pulled up and then thrown into buckets. The objects are then put back down over and over. The squid are attracted to the lights that these types of objects create. Squid are in high demand. Calamari is a dish that's eaten throughout the world. And because of the high margins on the dish, it's very lucrative for fishermen then to go out and catch squid. In fact, it's so lucrative that hundreds of unlicensed fishing boats off the coast of many countries go out and pull in hauls every day. This, combined with the fact that no squids are endangered because their numbers are so high, has led to an increase in fishing of squids. 
its long-term effects are unknown. Most likely, it'll affect the predators that feed on these squids and the ecosystems they're in. Squids are fascinating creatures that span from the incredible into the unbelievable. More species of squid are discovered every day, and with them come new questions. Questions we look forward to learning the answer to, and see what more we can learn about these amazing creatures of the sea.